Act. I'm Amy Goodman. Opponents of capital punishment were given a boost this month when The New York Times reported an overlooked development. The American Law Institute, the group that provided the intellectual framework for the death penalty and remained the lone mainstream legal voice to continue supporting it, had made what one columnist called, quote, a tectonic shift in legal theory. In October, the ALA voted to abandon its work on the death penalty effectively renouncing the system it helped create. The measure cited what it called, quote, the intractable institutional and structural obstacles to ensuring a minimally adequate system for administering capital punishment. Well, we now turn to two cases, highlighting some of the problems around the U.S. capital punishment system. We begin in Chicago where prosecutors are targeting a group of Northwestern University journalism students who've helped exonerate 11 wrongfully convicted prisoners, including five on death row. Cook County prosecutors have subpoenaed Northwestern and the Medill and project to hand over student grades, grading criteria, class syllabi, expense reports and email messages. Prosecutors are focusing on the students who conducted a three-year investigation into Anthony McKinney, who was convicted of fatally shooting a security guard in 1978. A judge is now reviewing McKinney's case. The Cook County State Attorney's Office says it needs every pertinent piece of information about the student's three-year investigation. But Northwestern is challenging the request, contending it's overreaching, irrelevant to McKinney's case case, in violation of the state's protections for journalists and a breach of federal privacy statutes. On Monday, a group of media outlets filed a court brief supporting the student's defense. The outlets include the Associated Press, The New York Times and more than a dozen others. The brief says the student should be entitled to the same legal protections as working journalists. We go now to Chicago, where we're joined by Brian Smith, writer-at-large for Chicago Magazine. He has a lengthy piece on the Northwestern case in the latest issue of the magazine, called The Professor and the Prosecutor. Brian Smith joins us by Democracy Now! video stream from Chicago. Brian, lay out this case, the case of Anthony McKinney, who's been in prison for more than 30 years. Right. Well, uh, the, the clash of the case is between Cook County State's Attorney Anita Alvarez, who took office about a year ago, and then, of course, Northwestern University's Medill Innocence Project, uh, a group of students who, under the leadership of David Protest, a journalism professor, investigate cases of potential wrongdoing. The case uh, of Anthony McKinney, Anthony McKinney uh, has almost been lost in all of this. Uh, you know, Anthony, Anthony McKinney was convicted 31 years ago uh, of murdering a security guard. Two uh, eyewitnesses placed him at the scene, and he confessed uh, to police detectives. But all three later uh, claimed that they were beaten into the confessions by a detective who it later turned out had uh, numerous complaint, brutality complaints against him. So that's how Anthony McKinney uh, wound up in, in jail. Um, the students, in investigating the case, they spent three years investigating, uh, uncovered or found the two witnesses uh, who testified against McKinney and uh, got both of them to recant and say that they made up their statements because they were beaten. They also, and more importantly, found a man named Anthony Drake, who um, told the students that he was at the scene of the crime, uh, saw who did it, and that McKinney was not there. So the students uh, took this information first to uh, the, the Center for Wrongful Convictions at Northwestern University, which is a group of student lawyers and professional lawyers. Uh, who, and, and then the students, as they have in, in all of the other cases uh, that they've investigated, turn the information over to the Cook County State's Attorney's Office. Now, uh, in past cases, um, the Cook County State's Attorney's Office, uh, well, the, the, the information uh, has risen and fallen on the merits of what the students brought them. Uh, no Cook County State's Attorney has ever turned around and gone after the students. In this case, uh, Anita Alvarez subpoenaed the students uh, for their grades, for class evaluation materials, for unpublished interviews. Uh, at, and she did this, she said, because uh, in re-interviewing the witnesses that the students interviewed, uh, the, these witnesses recanted and, and said some things about the students, for instance, that. Uh, in one case, that they uh, tried to pay him, in Anthony Drake's case, that they tried to pay him for an interview. 
Uh, a couple of the other witnesses that uh, the state's attorney's office uh, talked to said that some of the female students flirted with them to try and get them to give interviews. So, uh, and then another, one other witness said that um, the students were just doing it for grades. So uh, Anita Alvarez used all of those things to, she said, all of those things uh, called into question the student's investigation and, and that she needed to, uh, uh, to find, get to the bottom of, of, of what the witnesses said. And so talk about the, um, the filing yesterday by the news organizations, Brian Smith. Well, the filing, uh, I believe, was 18 news organizations uh, filed an amicus, amicus brief, uh, including The Washington Post, uh, New York Times, Associated Press, uh, both Chicago papers, uh, just basically uh, defending the students and in, in this regard that, uh, as you pointed out in your introduction, you know, one of the uh, operative questions here is whether the students acted as were acting as reporters or whether they were acting as investigators, criminal investigators. The students claim that they, you know, were acting uh, as reporters and they back that claim saying they published the information that they uncovered on their website and also cooperated with uh, a reporter for the Chicago Sun-Times to produce a front page story. Uh, Alvarez, on the other hand, says that the students um, were acting as criminal investigators and uh, without an intent to publish anything. And, and she also said that the fact that they turned their information over to the Center for Wrongful Convictions uh, suggested they were actually working with the legal team uh, in, in an investigative capacity. So this amicus brief uh, is in support of the student's position that they were acting as reporters. And David Protest, who's become famous for leading these students in investigating um, cases of people on death row and who have been sentenced to life in prison, uh, like McKinney, uh, his response to all of this in the university? Well, certainly, um, he says that uh, his students are uh, definitely acting as reporters, and, you know, of course, he— um, backs that up by saying, first of all, it's a journalism class, it's an investigative journalism class. Uh, he points out, uh, too, that the information was published on the website and uh, that there was a, a newspaper story produced. And, you know, in the past, uh, protests has also uh, produced books based on the investigations that his students have done. So, you know, all of that together, he says it's clear that they were acting as reporters. Uh, he also you know, vehemently denies these uh, the allegation that one of his students paid uh, a witness, uh, paid Anthony Drake, uh, basically to change his story and say that, uh, you know, Anthony McKinney was not at the crime scene. Uh, and he calls absurd these uh, allegations that his students somehow, you know, flirted with witnesses in an effort to I don't know, seduce them into making statements. He says all of that's absurd, and it's be beside the point. The, the, the question is, in his mind, is Anthony McKinney, whether or not uh, a man who's been in prison for 31 years is being, is there, you know, wrongfully, and whether, uh, you know, the, the case should fall, rise and fall on the merits of the witnesses themselves. Now, if they you know, did recant to uh, Cook County State's attorneys investigators, then, you know, Anita Alvarez could use that information to impeach the witnesses. There's no need to go after them, certainly for things like grades. Uh, you know, uh, again, he calls that just uh, absurd and inappropriate. Brian Smith, we're going to continue to follow this case, but what happens right now? Well, uh, as you pointed out, the amicus brief was filed yesterday, uh, along with a, a response to uh, the state's attorney's subpoena. Uh, next up will be oral arguments uh, b between the two parties and the crucial question of whether the students acted as reporters or criminal investigators will be decided. Brian Smith, I want to thank you for being with us in Chicago. Very interesting piece uh, you did for Chicago Magazine, and we'll link to it at democracynow.org.